anger, hurt, hopelessness. Those are the emotions I felt as I read the endless stream of articles on George Floyd's murder the day after. I needed to do something, wanted to change something. But I'm one person, a world away on the islands of Japan. What could I possibly do? I got my answer when Sierra Todd recruited me to head a team of volunteer graphic designers and translators to create informative materials about a June 14th march in Yoyogi Park. Sierra is a friend and was a college student at the time, and she was the visionary behind the march. It didn't hit me until after the march was over and people were approaching us asking what was next. I heard things like, I have four hours I can dedicate every week, what do you need? Or, I can't actively help, but I can share and attend events. Some people said I want to help, but I can't do so publicly because of my job. And I even heard things like, I want to help, but I'm just a student. There were people of diverse backgrounds, different countries, and a range of ages who all had differing capabilities and reasons, but they all wanted to do something. In trying to help people accomplish that, I realized that activism is more than adult organizers and direct actions, but an amalgamation of people and actions of varying degrees that create a movement. To illustrate this, I created a pyramid of actions based on my own experience and study. It is ordered not by importance, but what might be considered levels of engagement. I want to show how anyone can get involved in a movement. Many of you already are without realizing it. All of these actions are important. Individually, they may not feel like much, but combined they lead to greater awareness and involvement with the end goal of societal improvement. At the base is awareness. It is where most, if not everyone, starts. Awareness is simple. Reading and searching to become knowledgeable about current events and social issues. People are responsible for their own knowledge and behavior to grow into good advocates for their cause. It is never too late to become aware. I'll admit, I wasn't the most socially aware teen or young adult. I focus only on myself and the small bubble around me. But in university, I started paying attention to the news more and talking to people around me about current events. The 2015 Baltimore uprising after Freddie Gray's death happened uh, only 30 minutes away from my campus. So I couldn't help but to pay attention. By the time I moved to Japan in 2017, Awareness alone was already feeling like not enough for me. I started participating in online engagement. The sharing of online material that others have created to spread knowledge and awareness, drive people to action, or both. We expand as people by becoming more aware. Now help others become aware too. I like to say online action is good for introverts like myself, as it allows others to become informed and engaged by their own volition without the need to approach others directly. If you retweet informative threads or share slides about current events to your Instagram stories, you're already participating in online engagement. Easy, right? Online action creation is like online engagement, except you are no longer sharing the material, but creating the material that is meant to be shared. There would be no blog posts, threads to retweet, or petitions to sign if it wasn't for the dedicated people that create them. I put interpersonal communication in the middle of my pyramid, but it is not simple. Discussing social issues with friends, family, and even strangers on and offline takes emotional labor and fortitude especially when you may be younger than those you are engaging with. I have conversations about the world today with my mom quite often, and while we may not always agree, we come away with more understanding of each other and our world views, because we come from different times and our life has changed so much before our very eyes. Having these discussions gives you and your community the chance to learn and grow 
and it makes offline action that much easier to pursue. Offline engagement is much like online, but requires physical presence and usually communication. Physical presence tends to draw a lot of attention from the general public, media, and government. It can also be morale boosting to see other people who care about the same issues as you. These are the marches, the town halls, the vigils. These are the events that people think about when they hear activism and make the news. But there is a lead up to them, they don't just happen. If you've gone to such an event, perhaps you'd like to help plan them in some capacity. Helping coordinate people, supplies, and marketing are great opportunities to volunteer. That is offline action creation. And a step up from that is organizing, which involves assembling and supervising teams of individual activists for large-scale action creation and keeping track of group affairs to maintain success. This is probably the most difficult role, as it involves a lot of responsibility and research. When we had the Yoyogi March, we had no idea how to get a permit or our rights as marchers. And things, these were very important things that we had to figure out in a very short amount of time. The entire march planning was done in two weeks. We had help, of course, from people older and more knowledgeable than us who had done this before. And people will be there to help you all as well. Organizing can be one of the most public-facing roles, as head organizers often end up as spokespeople. That is what we unexpectedly became when media crews started showing up to a march that was only supposed to have 200 people initially. I am not a long-time activist. I feel like I went through this journey very quickly from sympathizing with and sharing articles about police brutality from my couch, to helping organize a solidarity march, to chair of Black Lives Matter Tokyo, supervising very dedicated teams of volunteers, put together webinars, concerts, podcasts, an art journal, and more, to help educate people about racial discrimination, not only abroad, but here as well. Many of them are students and full-time workers, busy with their own lives, but dedicating time to a cause that they believe in. Some of them, multiple causes. I want to make very clear that while I believe that having a sense of social responsibility is important, activism at any level can be a lot of work, both physically and mentally. Ask for help. Without older activists offering their insights and expertise from years of experience, I do not think we would have been as successful as we were. Remember that your health and safety is most important and that it's okay to step back, recuperate, and even retire. Remember it is possible to shift between levels of engagement at any time as they are all integral to overall success. I hope my words today brought some understanding of all the moving parts of activism and how anyone can get involved regardless of ability, age, and time commitments. When I see the eagerness and passion of the next generation to get involved in social change, it makes me happy, proud, and hopeful. Good luck to you all. Thank you very much for having me today, and thank you for listening.